Who do people say the Son of Man is? Public opinion manifested a vague, common, and at times special knowledge, as it saw in Jesus a good man, a prophet, someone of God. The fact is that this is not enough to define the mystery of Nazareth. Jesus certainly prepared his disciples for something more, for a deeper understanding. He raised them to the maximum that they could reach in the knowledge of him before his death. Such knowledge did not have the clarity that the disciples obtained after the resurrection. However, they already had enough to express that Jesus was not a simple man, a simple prophet. Who really is Jesus? And who do you say that I am? Jesus doesn't want a scientific de definition of him. He doesn't want concepts about his person. He already knew the way of thinking of those who killed the prophets before him. He also already knew what human beings are capable of doing with power in their hands. In this text, what interests him is the adherence of his disciples to him and to his work. Knowledge alone does not say anything. It does not elevate anyone. Often, it only serves to deceive those who know it into illusion of a universe of pride and self-sufficiency. It is not this kind of knowledge that serves in the discovery of Jesus. Here, it is an experience in the intimacy of a life of encounter, of openness to the action of God and faith. The apostles lived with Jesus, listened to him, learned from him, saw his miracles and experienced, he, and experienced his merciful actions. Jesus' life would then was the most perfect school of life and faith. So confirming what they say about him doesn't mean anything, because what they say doesn't match the master's reality. Knowing the reality of Jesus requires personal experience and self-giving. Renunciation of worldly mentality and acceptance of God's logic. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Peter tells the truth about the Master, but he does not know the depth of this statement. In fact, It was professed by inspiration of God. Peter did not imagine Jesus as the Messiah, according to the thought of God, but according to the mentality of the jails. Even so, Jesus respects his affirmation, and still among the 44 beatitudes of the New Testament, he dedicates one to Peter. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. In Peter's affirmation, two crucial points for faith are present, the Messiah, the Anointed One, and also the Son of God. The term Son, in the original Greek, is preceded, is preceded by the definite article indicating that Jesus alone is the Son of Antono Messiah. That is, by a sense, from all eternity, He is the Son. Hence, why this revelation could only be really have come from the Father. The human being would be incapable of understanding it. A demonstration of Peter's incomprehension, despite the proclamation of faith accomplished, occurs at the end of the text, when Jesus says that he would suffer to cry a lot and die on the part of the elders, the high priest and the teachers of the law but that he would rise on the third day. Peter manifests himself and once again demonstrates not knowing the type of Messiah that Jesus was. In both Peter's statements, there is tremendous ignorance about the Savior's person and mission. For his part, Jesus does not give up on the mission that he wants to carry out through him. You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, 
and the power of hell will never be able to overcome it. Simon is called translated as stone, but not as rock. The Greek language makes this distinction, using netpa to refer to the term rock. To the term rock, this means that Peter is not the rock. In this way, the word rock will always be linked to Jesus Christ, and because of him, to faith. As total adherence to him, the rock on which Christ built his church is not the human figure of Peter, but faith, unshakable in Jesus Christ as the Messiah, Son of God, the God made flesh, the cornerstone of our salvation. Not just any form of faith is said, but the faith professed by Peter. This means that professing the truth about Jesus Christ requires participation in His reality. Hence, why Solomon, Simon, also became stone, with the mission of justifying in faith and being the visible head, he of flock of the Lord. Christ is the living rock, and the baptized are living stones in the spiritual building, which is Christ. And the gates of hell shall not prevail over it. The third port designates security for one environment and does not attack another. In this sense, it will not be the door that will attack the church, but the followers of Christ who will have to destroy the doors of everything that leads to death. If there is a reference to Sheol, it also indicates a whole culture of death. Pride and corruption established by the midst of humanity, in which is intended to con remain as such, keeping itself safe, according to the technique of manipulation, falsification, and illusion of prepared people for inhuman discipleship. The gates of hell will never prevail over the church, because the power of Jesus Christ works for our conversion and salvation. Glory to you, Lord.